This module will cover examination techniques for amphibians. The presentation is oriented mainly towards anurans, but the techniques reviewed can be used on other amphibians as well. This module is intended for veterinarians. While the information may help to educate non-medical personnel about the purposes of various procedures, the practice of veterinary medicine and the performance of the techniques described should be reserved for licensed veterinarians only. It should also be noted that all of the photographs in the presentation were obtained during routine clinical procedures as veterinarians were caring for ill amphibians. The first and often most important component of the amphibian physical exam is obtaining an accurate history. As many problems of amphibians arise from environmental stressors, clues to the causes of illnesses can be found before an actual exam is done. The origin of the animal is important. Wild-caught individuals may be more heavily parasitized or have difficulty adjusting to new environmental parameters, whereas captive-born animals may be more prone to chronic or metabolic conditions such as metabolic bone disease. The age, gender, and reproductive activity should be noted. The number and composition of cage mates is critical as it may indicate social or other stressors in the environment. The health of the other animals in the collection may help determine the extent of the problem or help select between rule outs that affect individuals versus groups. A complete picture of the husbandry parameters is required, including types and placement of light sources, light cycle, humidity ranges, temperature gradients, and substrate used. Information about the diet is helpful, particularly what items are fed, how much food is actually consumed, and what supplements are being used. The condition of the enclosure water strongly impacts amphibian health. As part of the history, a record of what parameters are routinely measured, the source of the water, filtration methods, and any water treatment methods should be discussed. If a water sample is available at the time of the exam, nitrogen in its various forms and phosphorus should be measured. When transporting amphibians, either for shipment or to the veterinary clinic, it is important to keep them protected. Small plastic containers work well. They can be bedded with moist paper towels or other absorbent material. If the animals might experience drastic changes in temperature during transit, the plastic containers should be insulated. Coolers or styrofoam containers work well for this purpose. It is important to be prepared before the exam to keep handling time to a minimum. Useful items to have handy prior to the exam include powder-free gloves, dechlorinated water or amphibian ringer solution in a spray bottle. Note that this bottle should be purchased and used only for this purpose. Do not switch back and forth between water and other solutions using the same bottle. Unbleached paper towels. These may be difficult to find, but you should not use bleached products because the chlorine can remain in the towel and be toxic to amphibians. A small scale. Small cotton-tipped applicators. Oral speculums. and a small selection of commonly used medications such as enrofloxacin or furosemide already diluted to concentrations that would be measurable for small patients. Tools, scales, and exam tables should be disinfected between animals. You may use diluted bleach, chlorhexidine, or ammonia, but regardless of products chosen, it is very important to rinse any surface or tool after cleaning to prevent harming the next patient. The exam consists of both a visual and a physical exam. There is much information that can be learned by first looking at the animal before handling. Body condition should be assessed. Here you can see this animal's in thin body condition with visible and prominent vertebrae and pelvic bones. Sometimes it is helpful to look at a conspecific at the same time for comparison as different species will have different normal body shapes. The animal's posture may give clues to areas of concern or possible environmental problems. The species' natural history should be taken into account when evaluating posture. For example, as shown, both of these frogs are in a body position normal for that species. However, if this Atalopus species were hunkered down like the horned frog picture here, it may indicate the environment is too dry for the frog. 
Alternatively, if the horned frog were standing up and alert, it may indicate the animal is uncomfortable. Movement should be evaluated when possible. In this video, it is apparent that the newt is having difficulty using its rear legs. This may be a sign of trauma or problems with calcium metabolism and may not be noticed if the visual exam were skipped. Skin erosions, discolorations, and skeletal malformations can generally be easily observed. The rate and depth of respiration should be observed before the animal is stressed by handling. For example, normal gular respirations can be observed in this video, but the rate may be increased as the animal is already being handled. A container can be very useful for doing an exam without handling. In this example, all of the above parameters can be observed while the animal is restrained in this clear tube. Animals can also be easily weighed with small plastic containers. When you are ready to handle the animal, be sure to handle it firmly but gently and to wear powder-free or rinsed gloves that have been moistened with dechlorinated water prior to restraining the amphibian. For the hands-on physical exam, the order the animal is examined in does not matter, but you should do the exam in the same order every time to avoid forgetting important pieces. I personally examine all animals in a head-to-feet direction. Starting with the nose, the rostrum should be carefully examined as rostral abrasions are common. All portions of the eyes should be examined, both the superficial cornea and deeper structures if possible. The oral exam can be performed using different types of speculums. Regardless of type, it is important to be gentle. Here, two soft spatulas are being used, but metal and other plastic speculums may also be used. The cavity should be examined for abnormal colors or lesions. In addition, as there is no bony separation between the base of the orbit and the mouth, ocular problems may be caused by oral lesions, and animals may stop eating if they have ocular pain. So it is vitally important to do a complete oral exam when evaluating ocular problems in frogs. Palpation of the Saloma cavity may reveal bladder stones, fluid, eggs, or other masses. Lastly, transillumination of the coelom in small patients may enable you to see some internal structures. In many cases, a complete neurologic exam is not needed if the animal appears appropriate and is ambulating normally. But in cases of problems with ambulation, posture, or lethargy, the neurologic exam may yield additional information. Three major reflexes can be easily tested. Each limb should withdraw when a toe is pinched. The animal should recognize the abnormal position and try to right itself when placed on its back. And there should be a strong palpebral blink response. That completes the module on basic amphibian physical exam. Additional resources are listed here. Thank you for your time and attention and good luck with your future amphibian projects.